race. Hebrews chapter number 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Get your Bibles, please. And we'll look here this morning at uh, these very, very, very well-known verses of Scripture. And I'll, I'll bring the message if it's the Lord's will. He'll help me. Hebrews chapter number 12. You understand that Hebrews chapter 11 is what we call the roll call of faith. And Hebrews 11 tells about all these great people in the Old Testament and by faith won the victory in their generation over various obstacles. And then he starts out chapter 12 like this. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about. See, that compass is like a compass, round, compass, compass, around, with so great a cloud of witnesses. Now, there's an argument about whether that's the people in chapter 11. I can't prove it one way or the other, but I like to think and I somehow believe that as we run our race for God, the heavenly grandstands are around us with a great cloud of witnesses somehow cheering us on. There will be people arguing with me when they hear me say that, but uh, that it said, verse 11, chapter 11, all those people, and then chapter 12 said, Wherefore, seeing we're compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses, it's almost like in a big stadium, like, like in the Olympics, when they do, you got all these people and they're cheering on the athletes down on the, on the ground. Hold your finger there in the scripture now. It is a known, proven fact that athletes perform better in front of a crowd. Of course they do. That's why the home team, the audience, the, the fans in the stand, they make them put forth extra effort. You go out and, and run on your own or something. You're not going to put the effort into it that you're going to be if you was on that big stage representing your country in the Olympics. I mean, no, them, them, them swimmers, they, they beat anything I have seen swimming. I'm telling you, 100, 200 meters, that's some swimming, buddy. Uh, fast, I mean, <laughs> I mean, like, like they're, and, and, they're, and we'll talk about that a little bit. And they, they wait like that, and they're all out there, and they, bam, they blow that horn or whistle or whatever it is, and they hit that water, and they're gone. Now, Look here what it says. We're compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses. All the grandstands of heaven filled. Wherefore he said that. Let us lay aside every weight. A runner can't run a race with a bunch of weights on him. And the sin. There's some things in your life that are a weight, but it's not necessarily a sin. But you can serve God better without it. Amen? Sure. All right. Which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience. Remember that. The race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endure, uh, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of him sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. That means you remember, you remember what Jesus went through for us so you won't get all tore up and discouraged and quit. I'm preaching this morning on running the race for Jesus. I'm going to compare the Christian life to running a race. That's exactly what the, the writer of Hebrews was trying to get across to us here for the Holy Spirit he said, you run a race. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, they that run in a race run all, but one receives a prize. He said, so uh, I run, not as one that fights, as one that beats the air. We're running. We're running for God. You know what I'm doing here this morning? I'm running my course for the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I've been running this since I was 18 years old. And God put me in a special lane of my own when I was 19, and I got called to preach. Let me explain this to you this morning. Give me your attention, please. Number one, the reason for running this race. The reason for running this race. Well, the reason is, of course, obviously, the great cloud of witnesses. There, there's people depending on us. We run with a goal in mind, keeping your eyes on Jesus and look at Him, lest you be wearied and faint 
in your mind. Do you remember? There's a great cloud of witnesses. My mom's up there. My daddy's up there. My sister's up there. Saints of God, my pastor, Hall Hollifield, is up there. Now, we know that God don't let people see all the sin and misery of this world. We understand that. But God's great enough that He could let them be our cheerleaders and, and fix it so that they could uh, do what's the thing we're doing. Sometimes I think, maybe my mom's up there saying, Come on, Danny. Come on. Let's go. I, I can't prove that. But uh, uh, sometimes I want to think that, that maybe they're cheering us on. A great cloud of witness, and they're out there saying, Go, y'all! Go! Like you do at any kind of sporting events. Now, we have runners in here. There's runners all over this church. TJ, the runner. Uh, my, uh, Corey's a runner. Dax is a racer. Uh, y'all, there's a lot of people in here that are in sports. Todd, racing. Y'all, and everybody in here. You're a racer, right? He's a racer. Hey, Amen. You're talking about running race. Like that right there? Well, that's what it's like. Now, when you get, uh, when you get saved... You start in the Christian life, and you're supposed to run like this. We're going to run. I'm going to do running this morning, so uh, y'all going to have to stay with me. We're running a race. Well, I'm, I'm going to church. I'm going Wednesday night. I'm going Sunday night. I'm reading my Bible. I'm praying. I'm running. I'm just running, running, running. That's all I've been doing since I got saved, and that is the reason for this race. You know why we run? There's a crown waiting, people. There's a crown awaiting. You know, uh, 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 people say, I don't care about no crowns. I don't know no, no rewards. Listen, man, when I tell you they put them, I, I wouldn't give you a dime for them gold medals for just for having it. I mean, it ain't nothing. I don't know. Is it real gold? Maybe I would give you a dime. Uh, but uh, if it's going to be these little fake, if it's little fake ones, you know, they're not, they're not really worth nothing. But them, them medals they put around their neck like that right there, and, buddy, when you see that American flag going up like that right there and that national anthem start, dun, 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 and they hold that metal like that, you know what? I don't, you know, I can't hip it. I can't hip it. I start thinking about one of these days. One of these days when me and you cross the finish line. I might cross it before you do. I hope and pray that maybe the band might strike up a little song and say, all right, here he is. I might come in bleeding. I might come in bloody. I might come in a cripple like this right here. But by the grace of God, I plan on finishing my course in this race. Amen. I mean that with all my heart this morning. Now, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that's the reason for running. Now, let's talk just a minute about the start of this race. The start of this race. Uh, you can't just go up there and say, I can, run, I can outrun anybody here. I mean, you've got to be registered. You have to have your dues paid. You have to have your name on the roster. All of that before you can be in a race. You got a lot of people out here uh, uh, can play ball, but they ain't, they're not, they ain't registered. They ain't on the team. They don't have their name on the roll book. They can't, they can't play. I don't care how good they are. There's a lot of people that's very religious. Very, I mean, boy, they do this. They live right and they're moral and everything, but they're not in the race because they ain't never been registered. You say, how do you get registered? Your name has got to be put on the roll book. And you get that by getting saved. By getting born again. When I got born again, they made an announcement in heaven. Ladies and gentlemen. And everybody looked up and the Lord's on the microphone. And an angel said, introducing. Right down there in lane uh, uh, 742. Little Danny Castle. Let's give him a big hand. And my name was on the roll. And the Lord said, Go. And boy, I took off like that. And that's what we're doing. You must have your name in God's book. See, if you're not saved, you can't live the Christian life. There's a lot of people trying to be Christians that ain't Christians. I'm not trying to be a Christian. I am a Christian. I can't help but be a Christian. But I want to be a good Christian. I try to be a good Christian. But I'm a Christian. I, you don't get, you're not a Christian by trying. You're a Christian by being born into God's family. And when you got saved, you got entered into the race. You are admitted. You are I didn't say committed. I said admitted. And you are registered with admitted. Anybody can't just come down here and run. I'm telling you, brother, they're wasting their time. You've got you to gotta weigh in, you know. I, you, gotta, you step on there and weigh in, you know. And, and he's so-and-so. He's, he's, he's five foot nine. He's, he's this, he's that. He's, he's uh, weighs so much. He, he, he does it, you know. Put his name down. Put his name. 
Now go, boy. Yeah, you're admitted in the race. Now, I don't know if you realize it or not, but the night you got saved, the morning you got saved, God put your name on the roll book of heaven, and you began right then your Christian life as a race. And Paul said, let us run the race with patience. Now, watch this this morning. Uh, he said this. He said, uh, uh, you're admitted, and then you have to go through training. Since this is a distance run, that requires a lot of training, a weight room, a, a training, lifting weights and success and stuff like that. Your success depends upon the discipline of your body. I said, any runner, any racer, anybody competes in any sports tells you this, your success depends upon the discipline of your body. One more time. Your success in running a race depends upon the discipline of your body. If you're not willing to practice, if you're not willing to work, if you're not willing to deny yourself some things you really want to do, if you're not willing to maybe push the ice cream back, if you're not willing to uh, push yourself a little bit, you will never win a gold medal. You'll never win the race. You'll never, and you'll never be much of a Christian if you let this flesh just do anything it wants to, go anywhere it wants to, have anything it wants. You have to discipline your body. You know why a lot of people ain't worth a dime for God? They won't tell their flesh no. Watch anything on TV, talk dirty, text dirty, look at bad stuff, go to bad places. Oh, you ain't going to run for God like that. You have to discipline your body. Lord in mercy, when I learned that in high school, did I ever learn it? I remember by the time I was in the 11th grade, we had it figured out pretty good. See, back then, and, and when you went out for basketball, everybody came out. I mean, 9th through 12th grade is all out there, and there'd be 25, 25 guys. 9th, played JV, 9th and 10th. But still, everybody was out there. And you know what he done? You know what them boys actually thought? We had boys on our basketball team, or come out for it, that actually thought, man, I'm going out for basketball. I can't wait. When does it start? And Coach Laney started basketball season on the day squirrel season started to find out who meant business. Because back then, all the boys went squirrel hunting. Don't laugh. Y'all probably don't even know what a squirrel is nowadays, some of y'all, or a gun either. Uh, but anyway, they went squirrel hunting. He said, we'll find out who's serious. And all the boys, I bet there's 25 boys showed up. And he said, all right, you know what they thought we was going to do? They thought we was going to choose up and play. They said, oh boy, our and I, we'll just choose up and play. This is going to be fun. Guess what? Them fir the first week of practice, I don't think we touched the basketball. I don't think we even got to touch it the first day or two. You didn't touch it. You say, what'd you do? You run your fool head off. Here's what he'd do. He'd say, all right, y'all, run laps. And go in his office and sit down and fix a cup of coffee. And leave us out there. He, and I, he had his door open so he could see out there like this. And here's what them boys would do. Here's what them freshman boys would do. They'd say, I'll show the coach I'm better than everybody. And they'd go, <laughs> they'd take off like that right there. And we didn't. By the time I was in 11th grade, here's how I took off. You know why? Because I knew we was going to be doing that a while. And that's the Christian life like that. I've seen some people get saved. Oh, in the world, I've been Billy Graham. Yeah, you, you're whatever. You'll, you'll pistol out like a firecracker in about two months. Run with patience. The man that settles down and said, all right, sometimes when I'm, when I'm running... If I'm going to run extra, like one time I told myself I was going to run three miles. And I hadn't run 50 feet. And my body was saying, stop. Slow down. This is not good for you. Your foot's itching. There's a little rock in your, in your shoe. All kind of stuff like that. And I tell, you have to have a talk with yourself. I said, shut up. We're going to be doing this a while. Shut up, Danny. We're not stopping. I don't care what you say. And it'd say, what if you had a heart attack? I said, what if I did? What if I don't? But, but ain't you hungry? Shut up. We're going to be doing this a while. Now, you have to constantly do that in your Christian life. 
constantly. You have to run with patience. Calm down, people. God don't always answer your prayers the second you pray them. Everything don't always go the way you think it should go. You know, well, I went to church for six months and nothing good happened. Just chill out for a while. Hang in there about 25 years. Serve God. Get in this thing for the long haul. When they race them motorcycles, they take off and wreck. You know what they do? What they're supposed to do? They get up, get back on them, and keep going. You'll never win a race. You'll never live right for God if you let little stuff stop you and if you're not willing to discipline this body. Impossible. Can't happen. Won't happen. The Bible said run with patience. You see, the race me and you're in, it's not a 200-yard dash or a 100-yard. This ain't a speed race. It's a marathon. It's a relay race. It's an endurance test. That's what this is. That's what the race is. It's like this. That's why we don't ever finish the race. I've heard somebody say, well, my race is about done. No, 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 no. Your course is about done. Paul didn't say, I finished my race. He said, I finished my course. The race is still going on. What happened was, they lit that torch back there when the Holy Ghost lit the fire on the day of Pentecost, and them guys grabbed the torch, like that torch, and they took off a running with it. And they killed them and cut their heads off and everything else. And they handed it to some old preacher. That old preacher ran out, and he ran and ran and ran and ran and ran as far as he could, and he handed it to some of the church fathers. And the church fathers brought it on down. Somebody brought it over here to America and handed it to somebody else. And somebody took it running. They handed it to some old, old mountain preachers. And Billy Sunday and all of them got a hold of it. And they run and run and run and run. And Joe Parson got a hold of it. Back about the time Billy Sunday was, was leaving out, Joe got a hold of it. And old Joe was running with that torch. And he came to Nebo and dropped it, and I grabbed hold of it. And I've been running with it ever since. See, the race ain't over. This is a marathon. This is a relay race. This is something that's not over until we cross the finish line and the Lord's come and we're all home to be with Jesus. It is a long-distance race. We're running this morning. Let's talk about the rules. Every race has rules. They all have. You can't have a race without having rules. We can talk all day about this. Hundreds, I can have you all stand up. We can have illustrations and stories about athletes. One thing is you, you stay in your assigned lane. I can't run yours. You can't run mine. I noticed that them swimmers, I thought, how do they even tell where they're going? And there's a line down there on the bottom of that pool. And they watch that line. Stay straight. You don't ever see one of them look over and say, he's going crooked. You know what will happen if he does that? They'll run off and leave him. He minds his own business. He watches the bottom of that pool, and he swims right on there. I, I think some of them don't even realize they won until they won, right? I, I mean, it would be hard. To, I don't see how they breathe. I mean, they kept their head underwater the whole time. I said, when are they going to breathe? And I guess they go, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and just keep swimming. I've never been a great swimmer. I can swim, but not like that. And, buddy, they, they run. And they, they stay in that lane. They stay in that lane. I can't run your race. You My course, your course, you can't run mine. You've got to run yours. I've got to run mine. You've got to stay in your lane. You got to, You can't jump over and get somebody else's ministry. You can't be somebody else. You've got to be the best you you can possibly be and, and stay in your lane. One time his disciples come to the Lord, and they said, Lord, he said, there's a boy over here casting out devils in your name, and he don't follow us. And the Lord said, don't you worry about it. He ain't against me. He's for me. You just don't mess. Don't worry about him. You go and preach the gospel. And one time they come to him, and they said, uh, Lord, the disciples of John fast, and this and that and the other. And John said, look, you mind your own, or the Lord said, you mind your own business. You do what you're called to do. Don't you try to worry about what somebody else is doing or what's not doing. You got a bunch of these people that all they do is sit in the grandstand and say, well, that 
because they're swimming crooked or he missed a lick or I don't like the way he runs or I don't like his tennis shoes or I don't agree with that. They ain't never going to get nowhere except criticize everybody. I got a lot of critics. Somebody asked me, what do you do with your critics? I outrun them. I outrun them. I ain't going to stop and talk to them. I will outrun them by God's grace. Talk more about that in a minute. But you have to stay in your assigned lane. Not only that. You have to lay aside every weight. If you're going to run a race, you do realize that, that sports clothes like this have no pockets. Bathing suits, are well, supposed to, have no pockets. Pockets are for weights. They're for stuff. You put your stuff in your pocket. Now, come on, people. Is this guy right here, is he going to run? I'm in a bed. All right, I'm going to run. What? What's what I'm getting ready to do? I'm going, and I'm pretty big myself. I'm bouncing on, on a long race. You know what them guys are doing I showed you a minute ago? They're just hitting on the balls of their feet. You ain't going to last long like that. Or running real hard like that, just hitting on the top. You better let the heel hit. Boom, boom. Like that. Now, all right, I'm running. I can do this. Now we're going to try some weight. Well, he's here. Five pounds. Five pounds. That's ten pounds. Watch. I can still do it. I can feel that ten pounds. Let me tell you. I can feel that 10 pounds. I can feel it. You say, well, you, you're still doing all right. Yeah, but I ain't going to last as long like this. Lay aside every weight. Boy, I can go now, man. I can go like crazy. That's what the Bible tells you to do. Lay aside weight. Well, and the sin which does so easily beset us. I go to the store. You go down there to the red box and put half your paycheck in it and you're at movies. These are some of Kelly found a Carrie Silver House one. Courageous, he's risen, drop box. But this is not what you get at Red Box. You get them weighty movies at Red Box. Then you got this. And you got all these movies you're gonna watch. And then, of course. You can't get your phone. You're not going to run without your phone because it's hooked right here. Some of y'all need to have a phonectomy and go to the hospital and have a phonectomy and have that thing surgically removed from your ears or your thumbs are going to grow to it. All right, I've got my movies. I'm saying, yep, did he? Oh, did really? Well, okay, I'll meet you over there. I'm, I'm, I'm going. But uh, let me see what else I got up here. I got a bunch of books I want to read, and I went and got them at uh, the store, and uh, I'm going to the beach, too, and I bought me some books to read, and I've still got my weights, and my phone, and my other weights, and I mean, you say, well, I'll, I'll, I'll be there Sunday morning, preacher. I'll be there Sunday morning, preacher. I'll be there. S I don't know. I can make it Sunday night with all this. I don't know. I ain't going to. I got, I got too much. You can't around too much junk, people. <laughs> don't you laugh at me, y'all. I forgot I had them things on. Listen, if you say, all the... Bam! I'm gone. Brrr, what's some thumbs go, buddy? Brrr. Bam! Run right into something. Bam! You listen, sometimes it ain't a sin. It ain't a sin to watch that movie. It ain't a sin to that. But I let, I'm not going to let it. Listen to me. Anything that hinders you from being what you ought to be for God is weight. It's weight. I tell you, it's weight. And then it says, run with patience. The thing that distinguishes a distance runner is rhythm 
and patience. He lands on the balls of his feet and then flattens it out opposite of a sprinter. That's what sets him apart. Patience. Whew. So then I'm going to say, you've got to go all, all the way down. I don't know if I want to. Sometimes I honestly think when I run to the end of the hospital and back, I picture it's like my life. And I know where I'm at. I'm done going to the end of the road and coming back. And I can show you a point in my road where I believe I am in my Christian life. I've done got half of it behind me. I'm in the last probably 30% of my race. I ain't planning on quitting now by God's grace. I'm not planning by the grace of God to throw in the towel. I've already got too many miles behind me. Too many rivers I've already crossed. Too many mountains I've already climbed. I ain't planning on quitting now. You know when you want to quit? You want to quit right after you get started and then about halfway. You think, gosh, I'm just now halfway. If you can get that halfway part over with and start headed back and think, you know what, I'm headed home. Um, I've done got three-fourths of it behind me. Son, you can go then. You can go. Paul said, I finish. I finish. I finish, people. Some of you remember when you got saved, God put you in the race, and you started out and you run real good, and then this happened and that happened. There's, there's, there's obstacles. You have to cross hurdles. You, you trip and you fall. You get muddy and bloody and everything else. But I'm going to tell you, brother, that's like a... Uh, Simone, whatever her name is, that little girl, and Ledecky, and, and, and Phelps, and, and all of them. Listen, you don't think they've had obstacles. You don't think they've had defeats. You don't think they want to quit a thousand times. But there's something down inside that says, I will not, by God's grace, give this up. I'm going to finish the race. Some of you sitting right here this morning, you may say, Preacher, I don't know how much further I can go. I'll say thirdly this morning, and I'm done. The finish. The finish of the race. There's the crossing. It's not who runs the fastest or the prettiest. It's who crosses the goal line. And that's when the Lord comes or calls. I said amen one time. This guy is having a battle, and this guy, one of his army sergeants, got shot, and he's trying to take the flag to the goal line or something like that and put it up and he got shot and he comes in and he said, man, where'd you get shot at? He said, I was almost at the top. You see how I answered that question? You know what most people would have said? Right here. Right here, sir. Got me in the leg. He wasn't even thinking. He said, where'd you get shot? And he said, I was almost at the top. Now, you can't teach stuff like that. Something's got, God's got to put that inside you. Something, you've got to have something down inside you that says, even if I did get shot, blah, listen, I've been shot, I've been tripped, I've fell my face in the mud uh, many a time, and right then the devil jumps on your back and says, why don't you just quit? You ever been there? You ever been there where you saw, no use trying, you've already messed up, but way, 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 way down deep inside, God put something in my little flicker of that little flame that says, get up, boy, get up, run, run, cross that goal line. It's not a speed race, it's finishing, finishing the race. It's a marathon. We begin in Him, we finish in Him. Not for our glory. We start with Him, we finish with Him. We start worshiping Him, we finish worshiping Him. We start honoring Him, we finish honoring Him. We start to please Him, we finish, hallelujah, to please Him, our Lord. I thought about it. Besetting sin, you know what a besetting sin is? They said they made these pictures of these runners like this, and they was running through weeds, and these weeds was growing up around them and getting around their, getting around their uh, legs and stuff. Can you imagine how hard it'd be if you was, have you ever tried to run through weeds, briars? That's the way living for the Lord is this day and time. We're in a briar patch, buddy, and you got all these people 
Got all these people trying to stop you. Some of you got weights on. Come here a minute, Ryan. Help me a minute. You done took your tie off. I thought you was going to help me finish this. Come up here. Stand right up there. I want you to get on my back. Can you get on my back? All right, here we go. All right. I'm on, here we go now. Are you ready? Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. It's too late now, boy. There ain't no backing out. All right. Here we go. Well, something tells me I need to get rid of something. I just ain't running as good as I used to be. See, that's what some of y'all need to do. Dump them old crazy friends of yours. You ain't crazy, but I'm just using you for an illustration. Dump them people. Some, you know what? That's some of you girls. That's your boyfriend. That's why you can't run for God. That's your girlfriend, boys. That's why you can't run. That's your pocketbook. That's your other stuff. That's your, listen, there's some things that you just do better off without. You're better off without. Right? A man is not crowned unless he strives lawfully. And that's why Paul, or John said in Revelation 3.11, Jesus said, Hold fast that no man take your crown. I'll read you something this morning as I close. I'm going to read you something a man sent me in the mail one time preacher sent me this in a good time when he sent it to me. I'm going to read it to you and maybe you can relate it to your Christian life. I know some of you have fought hard battles. I know some of y'all people sitting in here this morning, you think, preacher, I ain't running months. I just about give up. It just It's too hard. It's just too hard. Listen to this little story. It's called The Race. Talking about a little guy running and the crowd around it. You know what keeps him going? Same thing that keeps Dax going or me going in basketball. And you look. All you athletes, you'll look in that crowd and find your dad's face. Quit. Give up. You're beaten. They shout and plead. There's just too much against you now. This time you can't succeed. And as I start to hang my head in front of failure's face, my fall is broken by the memory of a race. And hope refills my weakened will as I recall that scene. For just the thought of that short race rejuvenates my being. It's a children's race. Young boys, young men. Now I remember well. Excitement and also fear. It wasn't hard to tell. They all lined up so full of hope, each thought to win that race, or tie for first, if not that at least, get second place. And the fathers watched from off the side, each cheering for his son. And each boy hoped to show his dad that he would be the one. The whistle blew, and off they went, young hearts and hopes on fire, to win be the hero there was each young boy's desire. And one little boy in particular, his dad was in the crowd, was running near the lead, and thought, my dad's going to be so proud. But as he speeded down the field across a shallow dip, the little boy who thought to win lost his step and slipped. Trying hard to catch himself, his hands flew out to brace, and mid the laughter of the crowd, he fell flat upon his face. So down he fell, and with him hope. He couldn't win it now. Embarrassed, sad, he only wished to disappear somehow. But as he fell, his dad stood up and showed his anxious face, which to the boy so clearly said, Get up and win that race. He quickly rose, no damage done, behind a bit, that's all, and he ran with all his mind and might to make up for his fall. So anxious to restore himself, to catch up and win, his mind went faster than his legs. He slipped and fell again. He wished that he'd quit before with only one disgrace. I'm hopeless as a runner now. I shouldn't even try to race. 
But in the laughing crowd he searched and found his father's face. That steady look again said, Get up and win that race. So he jumped up to try again, ten yards behind the last. If I'm going to gain those yards, I've got to run real fast. Exceeding everything he had, he regained eight or ten. But trying so hard to catch the lead, he slipped and fell again. Defeat. He lay there silently. A tear came out of his eye. There's no sense in running now. Three strikes, I'm out. Why try? The will to rise had disappeared. All hope was fled away. So far behind an error prone, closer all the way. I've lost. What's the use, he thought. I'll live with my disgrace. But when he thought about his dad, he'd soon have to face. Get up! Get up! An echo sounded low. Get up and take your place. You're not meant for failure here. Get up and win that race. With borrowed will, get up, it said. You hadn't lost it all. For winning is not more than this, people, to rise each time you fall. So up he rose to win once more, and with a new commit, he resolved that win or lose, at least he wouldn't quit. So far behind the others now, the most he had ever been. Still, he gave it all he had and ran as though to win. Three times he fallen, stumbling. Three times he rose again. Too far behind to hope to win, he still ran until the end. They cheered the winning runner as he crossed first place. Head high, proud and happy. No falling, no disgrace. But when the fallen youngster crossed the line last place, the crowd gave him a greater cheer for just finishing that race. And even though he came in last, his head bound low and proud, you would have thought he'd have won that race to listen to that crowd. And to his daddy sadly said, I didn't do so well. To me, you won, his daddy said. You rose each time you fell. Now when things seem dark and hard and difficult to face, the memory of that little boy helps me in my race. For all of life, it's like that race with ups and downs and all. And all you have to do to win is rise each time you fall. Quit. Give up. You're beat. They still shout in my face. But another voice within me says, Get up and finish that race. I don't know how it's going to be. But I know D.L. Moody's done gone. And Billy Sunday's gone. William Carey's gone. And Fanny Crosby's up there. And General William Booth. And George Whitfield and Finney. Paul and Peter and C.T. Studd. And my mom and dad. Dr. Ruckman Hiles. Billy Kelly. Mays Jackson. My pastor. All, all of them. They're all up there. Said, son, finish that race. I hope and pray. One day. I've always thought. I look, when I finished my race, I don't have blood coming out of my mouth, head busted, bruised here and all that. But I want to come in and look at my father's face and say, Lord, I didn't quit. I've done this for you. You say, well, they play the national anthem. I don't know what the national anthem is in heaven, but I'm going to let you hear what I think it's going to sound like. And you that have went through trials and troubles, you that have tried to stay faithful, the devil's knocked you down. You look at all these other perfect Christians and it seems like nothing ever goes wrong for them and everything in their life is right and, and you, all you've done is fall hell since the day you got saved. You hang in there and do right. It, it, it's not a matter of your timing. It's finishing that God counts. And I can imagine you might walk in and the grandstands of heaven stand and they'll say, representing his country, heaven, Derek Holland, Jeremy Huggins, and I place this award upon you for finishing the race. Hit that thing, knowing it would sound like this. Maybe. Everybody in heaven stand up there and start clapping. Did it, boy. You hung in there. You weren't perfect. You didn't the fastest. But by the grace of God, you crossed the goal line. I want to please him, don't you? 
I want the Lord to say, Well done, son, thou good and faithful servant. You say, Brother Danny, is it like it? Listen, when them, them guys stand up there, they say there's no feeling in the world like standing there saying, I'm one and representing my country. Listen, glory to God, people. Hallelujah. We've got that opportunity to stand. You talk, that, listen, you could lose Rio de Janeiro in one corner of heaven's grandstand. You could lose the whole United States media. You talk about a time. You talk about a coronation, brother. When the saints go marching in and God says, well, I'm risking my life on that promise right there. By God's grace, I want to lay aside everything that hinders me and run my race with patience. I'm asking you to do the same thing this morning. There's some of you fool around. Ain't no wonder you can't run. You're carrying somebody like that on your back. It ain't no wonder you can't run. You got habits and junk. Your pockets is full. You need to just throw that stuff down. And say, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back. We bust ministry. The soul winning. Living for God every day at work. I mean, that, hey, let's run it, people. Let's run that race. Y'all come and get us a song. We're standing. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. I wonder this morning, you'd say, Preacher, I want to finish.